Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Now let's say it again like there's 125 people in here. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. I knew you had it in you. I just knew it. Thank you for being with us tonight for our celebration of the birth of Christ. Uh, in person and online, we uh, appreciate your presence always. Uh, on this day, we are reminded, I think every year, of the closeness that God wants with us. God wants to be so close that he emptied himself into our humanity. How much closer can you get? And all of that was meant for our edification, to build us up, to lead us into the way of Jesus, which is the way of love. We're gonna begin our service this evening with hymn 102, once in a royal David city, and note that we're doing verses one, two, four, and six. Sing a new song to the Lord. 
We remember the Lord's salvation every day. We sing of God's peace to all the earth. Sing a new song to the Lord. We declare the Lord's marvelous works to all the world. We rejoice at the coming of the Lord. Sing a new song to the Lord. This lift us up in the name of the Lord. We celebrate the fulfillment of the promise. Sing a new song to the Lord. Let us receive the Lord's goodness. We sing a song of joy. Sing a new song to the Lord. See 
O oh God, you have caused this holy night to shine with the brightness of true light. Grant that we who have known the mystery of that light on earth may also enjoy you perfectly in heaven, where with you and the Holy Spirit who lives and reigns one God in glory everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. reading from the book of Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Gideon. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace with the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. Thanks. 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 Psalm 96. Please read this one responsibly by half verse. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the world. Sing to the Lord and bless his name. Proclaim the good news of his salvation. Declare his glory among the nations. And his wonders among all peoples. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He is more to be feared in all of us. As for all the gods of the nations, they are but idols. For it is the Lord who made them. Oh, the majesty and magnificence of his presence. Oh, the power and splendor of the Ascribe to the Lord, you families of the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord honor and power. Ascribe to the Lord <coughs> excuse me, the honor to his name. Bring him offerings and to his glory. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth tremble before him. The Lord is king. Let the heavens rejoice, and let the earth be glad. Let the sea thunder, and all that is in it. But let the hill be joyful, and all that is therein. He will judge the world with righteousness, and the people of the earth. reading from the letter of Paul to Titus. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all, training us to renounce impiety and worldly passions, and in the present age to live lives that are self-controlled, upright, and godly, while we wait for the blessed hope and the manifestation of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. He it is who gave himself 
that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify for himself a people of his own who are zealous for good deeds. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Augustus, 
that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Pyramus was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went down from the town of Beth from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house of and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who he was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of a great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace amongst those whom he favors. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. St. Augustine of Hippo. Eternal God, the light of the minds that know you, the joy of the hearts that love you, and the strength of the wills that serve you, grant us so to know you that we may truly love you, so to love you that we may truly serve you, whose service is perfect freedom. Through Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. Be seated. Now, I'm going to tell you right up front, you need to stick with me on this, okay? <laughs> One Christmas Eve, Pete and Jane were driving their Russian friend, Rudolph the Red, <laughs> back to his house. The weather outside was frightful. <clears throat> Jane asked Pete, do you think that's sleet or rain out there? It's rain, Jane, said Pete. I think it's sleet, Pete, said Jane. <laughs> Rudolph chimed in. It's definitely rain, Jane. No, I really think it's sleet, Rudolph, said Jane. Well, don't argue with the expert, Jane, said Pete. But what do you mean the expert, Pete? asked Jane. And Pete replied, Rudolph the Red knows rain. <laughs> Told you. My most memorable Christmas gift as a child was a toy called Mr. Machine. I was about eight years old when I tore open the wrappings to find Mr. Machine staring back at me from his packaging. Mr. Machine was a clear plastic robot-like mechanical man wearing a red top hat with a giant key in his back. And when you wound up that key, Mr. Machine would walk swinging his arms and his feet going and rotating on these wheels, and repeatedly ringing the bell that was mounted on the front. Mr. Machine contained 44 wheels and gears of all sizes and all colors that you could see moving and turning through the clear plastic case. 
course, an eight-year-old boy is mesmerized by all the activity and the workings of the gears inside of this toy. But here's the best part. Mr. Machine was made to be taken apart and put back together again. Now, all those 44 wheels and gears could be removed from the clear plastic body and, one by one, be put back together again. To me, that was the best part of Mr. Machine. To my dad, that was the worst part <laughs> of Mr. Machine. To be honest, I don't know if I ever got all those wheels and gears back into Mr. Machine in proper working order. I have a distinct memory of always having some parts left over, which is a man thing anyway. Yeah. I think, right? <laughs> But nonetheless, I loved Mr. Machine. Now, of course, as a child, I learned all the Bible story, stories, and I knew what Christmas was all about. I knew it was about the birth of Jesus, the Son of God, born in a stable, laid in a manger, revealed to the shepherds. Our home, like probably all your homes, had a Christmas crash that we carefully assembled and displayed every year at Christmas time. But like every kid, I loved when Santa came and left me and my siblings gifts under our tree, like Mr. Machine. Now somewhere along the way as I grew up, I came to realize that it was just as much fun to give gifts as it was to receive them. Looking for that special something for that special someone waiting for that look on the face as they opened an unexpected gift. Hoping, of course, that they would love and cherish the gift, even if it was just a new tie for Dad or cheap perfume for Mom. Then you start to realize that the gifts themselves are really only symbolic. They are expressions of the relationship that exists between the giver and the receiver. Giving a gift or receiving a gift was really all about the love, the care, the importance of one person for another, whether it be a spouse, a children, parents, friends, siblings, or maybe on siblings, we're not sure about that. <laughs> then at some point for me it came full circle and I realized that all those Christmas stories I learned as a kid were really about Jesus being the gift. Being the gift for a people that he loves so much. And that all the details of the story had special meaning in the bigger picture of God's plan. Now I have to be honest with you, I'm a bit leery when I hear some preachers talking about God's plan because it seems that too often they're really about the preacher's plans, not God's plans. But I do believe in the plan of God. I do believe God has always had a purpose, both in the act of creation and in the ongoing act of loving his creation. I believe it's a plan that God not only put into place, but continually, continually revealed and reveals time and time again. And here's what I think the plan of God is. To make himself findable. Findable. Make himself touchable. As I read the Bible stories from Genesis to Revelation, I see a God who worked very hard at being present to us. Who tried time and time again to reveal the reality of his heart to us. Through prophets and messengers, through men and women, through history and experience, our God had one overwhelming desire to convince us of his great love for us. And then, as Paul says in his letter to the Galatians, in the fullness of time, God sent his only son, born of a woman, to fulfill his law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. 
the ultimate expression of God's desire to be with us by being one of us can be found in the words of the first <coughs> chapter of John's Gospel. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us full of grace and truth. This to me is God being findable, God being touchable, all the symbols of the Christmas story, the stable, the manger, the shepherds, tell us where to really find God. And where is that? In the simple story of our lives. The son wasn't born in a palace surrounded by courtiers. He didn't sleep on precious silk sheets with his head on soft pillows. He didn't have servants to feed him or dress him. He wasn't found among the elite who veiled themselves from the harsh realities of life. He wasn't among the rich who so often turned up their noses at even the thought of the common folk, or turned a blind eye to the plight of the poor. God has never desired to be away, apart, or aloof, or separated from us, us, the object of his affection. And so through the Son among us, we discover God, who desires to be found and yearns to be touched. Through the experience of the little child born in a stable, laid in a manger, revealed to the poor shepherds, that God is accessible and huggable and lovable. And the, the, he continually assures us there is that, that there is not one experience in life when he is not beside us. All we have to do is open our eyes, open our hearts, and we'll discover God in the simplest places and often even in the most unlovely places. Now I'm going to share with you a Christmas story. It's a Christmas story Phyllis has heard for about a hundred years. <laughs> Pam has heard it quite a while. It's a Christmas story that I tell every single Christmas. If I was here for ten years, you'd hear it ten times. I tell it because to me it wraps up this, this whole experience of this findable, touchable God that I've been speaking about, a God that we find among us in the stories of our lives in the simplest places and often in the most unlikely places. A little boy wanted to meet God. How, how many of you remember this story? <laughs> Two. Well, see, I always count, when I was in Green Valley, I always counted them that they didn't remember from one year to the next. So it was like a whole new story. <laughs> if you were here last Christmas, you heard the story. But if you don't remember it, good. It's like hearing it again for the first time. A little boy wanted to meet God. He knew it was a long trip to where God lived, so he packed a bag with some Snickers bars and some cans of Coke, and he started on his journey. And when he'd only gone a half a mile or so, he met an old woman. She was sitting in the park, just staring at the pigeons. The boy sat down next to her and opened his bag. He was about to take a drink from one of his cans of Coke when he noticed that the old lady looked hungry. So he offered her some of his Snickers bars. She gratefully accepted and smiled at him. Her smile lit up her whole face. It was so lovely that the boy wanted to see it again, so he offered her a drink of his Coke. And once again, she smiled. The boy was delighted. They sat there all afternoon, eating and smiling, but they never said a word to each other. As it grew dark, the boy realized how tired he was, and he got up to leave to go home. But before he'd gone just a few steps, he turned around, and he ran back to the woman, and he put his arms around her and gave her a huge hug. And she gave him the biggest smile ever. 
When the boy opened the door to his own house a short time later, his mother was surprised by the look of joy on his face. She asked him, what did you do today that made you so happy? And he replied, I had lunch with God. And before his mother could respond, he added, you know what? She's got the most beautiful smile I've ever seen. Meanwhile, the old woman, also radiant with joy, returned to her home. And her son was stunned by the look of peace on her face. And he asked her, Mother, what did you do today that makes you so happy? She said, she replied, I ate Snickers bars in the park with God. And before her son could respond, she said, and you know, he's much younger than I expected. <laughs> Stand as you're able. Together we stand on the creed. We believe in one God, the Father the Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, the eternal God of the Father, God from God, like light from the light, true God from true God, God from not made. One being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us, for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate in the Virgin Mary, and as we say again, for our sake, which is so that our conscience is not we suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven. And this is in the right hand of the Father. You will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And this is in the of no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one the Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. We acknowledge one baptism for forgiveness of sins. We look at the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people. Lord Jesus, by your birth you share with us in all the experiences of life. We come to you now trusting that you understand the needs of the world, your church, and the people for whom we pray. Lord Jesus, Prince of Peace, speak your wisdom and give guidance to the leaders of nations in ways they can hear and understand. Speak and may your kingdom of peace, justice, and righteousness be established on earth. Lord, in your mercy. Lord Jesus, mighty God, speak your holiness to your church throughout the world. Speak and let your people celebrate your birth with a new commitment. Let us joyfully proclaim your glory, so that the whole earth is filled with the sound of praise and thanksgiving. Lord, in your mercy. Lord Jesus, everlasting Father, speak your love to your children. Speak and be born again in our hearts today and every day. Speak and let your love surround us and those with whom we share our lives. Help us to see you in others, so that by loving and serving them, we may also love and serve you. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, wonderful counsel, speak words of comfort, love, and compassion to those who are suffering, bereavement, loneliness, or sickness of body or mind especially Barbara. 
Janie, Jeannie, Larkin, Elizabeth, Rondra, Wynn, Bear, Rosalind, Rosalie, Shannon, Fred, Sean, Kate, and the other names we may offer. Speak and let them find peace and reassurance in knowing the light of your presence with them in their darkness. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Remember also those that this time of year have passed through death into the loving arms of God, people near to us, near to us, remembering especially Joe, Patty, Sam, Frank, John, Richard. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Lord Jesus, in your compassion and understanding of what it is to be human, hear our prayers. Use them and us to bring new peace, joy, love, and hope into the lives of those for whom we have prayed. For you are born to bring salvation to all through the grace of God our Father. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Moses, the of God, we confess that we have sinned against you. And the Father, word and deed, by the way we have done, and by the way we have done. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not learned to accept ourselves. We are truly sorry and we are very thankful. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty oh, God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins for our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit to keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Also, we share the Lord's peace with each other.
Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God. Please turn in your hymnal to hymn number 112 in the bleak midwinter. Sin and receive power to become your children. 
Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name.
the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ gave his life for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ keep us in everlasting life.
God of abundance, you have fed us with the bread of life and the cup of salvation. You have united us with Christ and one another. You have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. Now send us forth with the power of your Spirit, that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. There aren't any announcements per se, but I do want to take an opportunity to say thank you. Um, there are so many people that do so much work in this church. It's a, it, I should say a small group of people that do a lot of work in this church, um, whether it's tending to the altar or serving or reading, um, even Roger. <laughs> I even really appreciate Roger. And I do say that in all sincerity because I mean, he's like the, my right hand man. Um, he really uh, takes care of an awful lot around here that even I don't know about. So I really I appreciate that. And I appreciate all of you who offer yourselves in service to the church. And one final thanks is to Sheldon. This is going to be Sheldon's last night with us, last time playing with us for some time. Um, and we appreciate it. We appreciate it. Just taking the time to come down to Tucson, get set up, leave the music, pack up, take everything back up there. It's a big chunk of time. Um, and he's been gracious to us for doing it. So, Sheldon, thank you very much. We appreciate it. Please stand for the blessing. The Almighty God who sent His Son to take our nature upon Him, bless you in this holy season, scatter the darkness of sin, and brighten your heart with the light of His holiness. Amen. May God who sent His angels to proclaim the glad news of the Savior's birth, fill you with joy and make your heralds of the gospel. Amen. May God who in the Word made flesh join heaven to earth and earth to heaven, give you his peace and favor. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. And let us sing our final hymn, raising our voices, number 99, Go Tell It on the Mountain. Mm -hmm.
out into the world to love and serve our Lord and one another. Alleluia, alleluia. Praise be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. And our priests. <laughs>